Hi everyone, a massive warm welcome to today's uh, Monday Rapid Fire. We're diving straight in here with all the uh, tumultuous energy that's come from the uh, presidential debate. There's been a tremendous amount of uncertainty in the markets, I think, and we've seen uh, the dollar do some funny things. We've seen uh, normal markets do some funny things. We've seen crypto just go down, but we've seen us come into that support band again. Uh, now, I will say that though, and we've bounced out of it, but just broadly, markets hate uncertainty. And if Biden were to step down you know, soon, which is rumored to be happening, I'm not gonna talk about politics too long here, I did that ad nauseum with the masterminds last week, uh, but if Biden steps away here or something silly happens in that election you know, cycle of the next you know, week or so in terms of the incumbent dropping out, uh, we will see markets be very uncertain. So it could mean we have uh, another move back into the lows, but so far, I love what we're seeing here um, on Bitcoin uh, for a few reasons. So sentiment could not have been worse as we we're going back into the support range down there at 60,000. We've bounced back into the uh, support range that we see there. Uh, rather, we've bounced back above support, back into the range we've been in for about 140 days. Great, great sign. Uh, I think crypto Twitter, you know, people were saying it was dying and it was going you know, out. Crypto Twitter is one of the best places you can gauge sentiment as well as some other metrics as well and you know meme coins have taken a massive hit over the head that's another way you can uh look at it but we've had a uh, mega spot premium just get bigger meaning there is a premium to get the spot asset on the exchanges versus trade this range a lot of people have been absolutely wrecked trading leverage uh, and doing things like that uh we're looking at the sp uh, the uh, excuse me funding rates for futures we're, we're seeing that flip negative across all altcoins and especially uh, bitcoin and ethereum so that's really really important we're also seeing that the month has just closed. So um, start of July, if we are going to see Bitcoin begin to move and we will um, to, you know, to the other side, of course, um, and, and of course, to the downside is also a possibility. But generally, Bitcoin moves after the halving in a three to four month period after that. It's not always straight away. So we have to just keep that in mind. So bottom line, this is the moment that we would expect Bitcoin to bottom and begin to move back towards the midpoint and maybe the top of the range. So, so far, everything looks really, really nice. On the chart specifically, I love to see that we got what we wanted and that was that double bottom on the uh, Stoke RSI. So really, really like that. Meanwhile, normal RSI has come back to the midpoint. There's a lot of scope for it to come back higher there. Let's move down to a uh, long time. Well, actually, just while we're on here, you can see that the FETF here is on the, uh, I've got a vertical line indicating that it should be, you know, tomorrow or, you know, the next couple of days. There is some, rumors and reports that this might be pushed back to the 8th because there is some uh, additional filings are required by the SEC. So do not be surprised we do not get a launch of the F ETF in the next day or so, but rather time frame is probably more like a week from now. So just keep that on um, the back of your head. Then we're speculating and forecasting some other things on there, which you can um, see. If we go to the daily. Yeah, I think everything is about this range. Uh, and this sort of low period that we're putting in here this sideways accumulation is very very clear that some big whales investors have essentially just had the, the strategy here anything that drops beneath sixty thousand is buy. so if it, if the price as soon as it drops beneath it is bought up really really quickly and this support band here is is super obvious to my eye that this is trying to create a low we're also seeing the 200 support pricing underneath and that's on the daily. So I just love this. If we can crack this 20 and 20, uh, excuse me, the 10 EMA and the 21, uh, we're gonna see this market start to move quite aggressively higher, I think. Uh, so that's around about 64,400. You get above that and we start to create this motion. For confirmation and, and for new highs, we really wanna break up above this volume support at around about 68,000, come back down, retest that, flip it as support. Then we're gonna challenge the range high uh, levels, but RSI looks great. Stoke RSI is in a really nice position to you know run a bit higher, uh, but the RSI importantly is ready to go. Um, apart from that, though, we're going to be watching, I guess, the big three in my view. So that's a Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana. So uh, Solana, there's some news coming out that you know there, there's been some big funds that are applying for an ETF. So it's a really important chart to be watching, and I might just go there now. The ETF narrative is so so important um, for any crypto. And if you don't have it, then 
you know, there's this, the buoyancy that you do get from it is worth its weight in gold as an investor because it gives you some certainty of that upwards mobility, at least in the mid to longer term. Uh, so you can have a bit of confidence buying some of these lows on these altcoins specifically because, again, it's more trusted. You've got an idea that there's a catalyst that's going to start to bring it higher. So uh, in my view, though, that the Solana ETF launch or approval is actually a fair layoff. It's probably not going to come before a new administration, uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, markets love narratives and maybe ambiguous speculative targets and that's what a uh, some of these funds applying for the spot etf is almost better than getting an approval because it, the market is sort of saying all right well this is likely let's start buying this and pushing it higher so uh, ethereum we know the launch is coming and i think uh, solana and ethereum having these narratives and just pulling them up is going to do wonders for the old coin market We're already seeing dominance teeter a little bit on about that 54 region uh it hasn't broken down yet and proves in the pudding bitcoin will leave this show but if that starts breaking down then all hell is going to break loose in altcoin so really really like the i guess the organic bounce that we're seeing here from a really negative situation the sentiment like i just covered on before via crypto twitter and some other sources uh, is kind of backed up with the fundamental bad news which we've had mount gox and, and a few other you know big ticket items you know negative sell pressure from the etfs the market has absorbed that it has just been taking it and absorbing it around that sixty thousand mark eventually once the news is not affecting the market anymore we've found a floor we've found a floor and we're going high so just keep that longer term focus if you're still here congratulations if you're still paying attention you know dollar cost averaging and buying that fear buying that blood that is when you make the most money i'm not saying it's over by any stretch um, but i think the chances and likelihood of us having just put in a low uh in, at that 60,000 uh, region is firming in my eyes but the proof is in the pudding we need to see some levels being taken out but again the bears cannot push this market down lower than 60k with any meaningful uh strength so let's just pop on over to ethereum uh, really love this chart. This just looks like she wants to go up to 4,200, uh, 4,000 at least for the ETF launch. That's just me. Once it gets eclipsed this level, flips this as support, uh, yeah, then we're looking at those kind of levels. So that would be about 3,600, give or take. Uh, it's that range that we want to just um, move back into, and it will kind of be um, creating this kind of like bowl shape, but we want to sort of get on top of that and create that higher, high, higher low situation where in that new trend. So broadly, market really looks fantastic in terms of finding the low and a risk reward uh, sense. And we're seeing some strength out of those positions, which is exactly what we wanted to see because you've seen recently, the market has been just bleeding out and looking quite dead. But with everything going on right now in the world, uh, and especially with the US, um, situation uh europe also flipping right there's elections there that are starting to move the way more of right kicking the left out if you want to just look in a real macro sense in a world that is becoming um more unstable and less certain about where it's going do you think a decentralized store of value that's outside of the current system you know because in the us the uniparty system the republicans and democrats anything and the financial system anything that's outside of all that uh, do you think that's going to become more valuable or less valuable in this current climate and going forward? I'll leave that with you. Um, but to me, uh, Monday market, market update wise, I think we have turned a corner here on the 1st of July. And I think the next few months are going to be very, very fun and fascinating indeed. So um, have a great day, guys. Um, also, uh, please read last week's newsletter. We had a lot of great buy zones that um, came in and no more so than uh, if we just look at one of our new entrants to our top 10. And I'll just show you this real quick. Uh, because I was really happy with how, I guess, the signals panned out um, excuse me, for uh, Beam here. So this was a new entrance in our gaming category. But uh, we sort of said this area down here was was that region that you want to be looking at buying. And it's printed a strong bullish divergence. Can't predict that. Um, but it is doing exactly what we wanted it to do into those strong regions of support and strong uh, bull divergence there with prices moving lower while momentum is beginning to create higher lows. Stoke RSI looks really, really nice. Didn't even get near our danger zone in the end, which is great. So it didn't create any moments where you thought, all right, might have to manage risk or um, think it's going to go lower. But that has just dipped beautifully into those high regions of value. And this should skip up to these kind of levels now and, and maybe have a full trend on reversal. So uh, that's just what I wanted to show you. Again, guys, if you're not a subscriber to our newsletter, make sure you are. We uh, print it every single week with lots of actionable um, data and information, including a top 10 portfolio, which we give you those buy and sell signals. So have a wonderful day. We'll catch you again soon. Take it easy. Bye-bye.